Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2018 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter. It's a 3500 series. Uh, this vehicle has about 22,000 miles on it. We're going to be doing a brake system flush on this. And uh, the reason we do a flush, uh, the brake fluid takes on about 2% moisture per year, the type 3 and 4 DOT brake fluid. And the moisture is a catalyst for uh, oxidation of the fluid, but it also is a catalyst for corrosion. So by changing out the fluid, you keep the fluid much more, uh, uh, you have a lot less water content in it. And where that's really important is when you're coming down, let's say you're coming down a mountain like Pikes Peak, and you're riding those brakes and riding those brakes, uh, the wheel ends are going to get very hot. And they'll get out there 600 degrees easy, 700 degrees even hotter. And your pistons that are applying those brakes are fairly close to it, and that heat starts to sink into the caliper which is where the pistons are at that are applying the brakes. And that's where the fluid is at. And the fluid, uh, this fluid has a boiling point of about 368 degrees, I believe, wet boiling point. And if you introduce moisture into it, the moisture boils at 212 degrees. So when it boils, it turns to a vapor. And the way the brakes work is you're pushing on the master cylinder, the pedal's pushing on the master cylinder, you're creating pressure, and uh, that brake fluid it doesn't compress, it's creating pressure. The vapor from the water will compress. So as you're coming down the mountain, and if anybody, any of you have ever felt the brake fade, uh, you start pushing the pedal further and further down, you have less and less braking. It's a very dangerous situation. So by keeping the moisture out of that brake fluid, you maintain the, uh, the life, I shouldn't say the life, you maintain the uh, braking ability of that vehicle when you need it the most. So the reason we're doing this uh, brake flush with this uh, Amsoil fluid, and right here it kind of talks about some of the things that, that it offers you, the benefits that you get from it. You get maximum ABS and traction control performance. It maintains a per firm pedal feel. And I see that on, I've done a several Toyotas, 2018, 2019 Toyotas, uh, where the brake pedal feel was really fairly uh, strong after I did this, and the owners bought the vehicles new and the fluid really didn't look bad at all, but this fluid gave it a more firm feel. Now on the bigger vehicles, whether you're talking three quarter ton or one tons, I don't notice it as much on those for whatever reason, I don't know. But, um, and then also it protects the seals and lines from rust and corrosion. And your analog brake system is very expensive. Uh, if you get moisture in, those, in the valving of those brakes uh, and, and you start corroding them and it doesn't work, those are very expensive items to replace. And, uh, what I do is I do a flush with this brake fluid, the Amsoil brake fluid, and right here on the end it kind of talks a little bit about it as well. Um, when I do the flush, after I'm all done, I will take it out on the gravel roads. I'll find a gravel road, get going about 30 mile an hour, and I'll, I'll hit the brakes hard so that the analog has to work. And what that does is get some fresh fluid, this new fluid, into that analog brake system. Okay, so that's one way that I do it. It's a simple way to do it. You're out for a test drive anyway. Now, the other thing to think about, uh, some vehicles in the life of them, people never change the fluid. And uh, I had a 2001 uh, F-250 I did here not too long ago, and it was the original owner, and he had never had the fluid change, so we're talking 20 years. And if you think about the brake wheel ends, you've got uh, the wheel ends where your, where your pistons are at on the calipers, the fluid doesn't circulate in the brake system. So that original fluid from 20 years ago is still out there at the wheel ends. And it's seen a lot of heat, and it's gone through a lot of cycles of compression and so on. But the thing is, we need to get that fluid out and get some fresh in there to help maintain the, uh, the rust control and, and uh, keep that brake system working safely. So that's another reason behind doing the brake flush. And again, I do it probably every two to three years to uh, help maintain that, the safety and integrity of your brake system. So we're gonna do this uh, brake flush, and I've got a tool here, I wanna show you how it works. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to it in my description. It hooks up the compressed air, and it's just a little vacuum generator. And uh, it's got an O-ring seal up here, so we put this on, and this is where it captures the fluid at. And we have a, a hose here that goes on. So what we're doing is creating a vacuum, and when we put this on, this will snap on the bleeder. And we open that bleeder up maybe a quarter to a half a turn. You don't want to go too far because otherwise you start sucking air in and you'll see the air bubbles. But uh, you want a halfway decent flow. 
And what we're going to do is go to, the first thing we'll do is, is pop off this, this uh, adapter and we'll go to the master cylinder and suck out as much as we can out of the master cylinder. Now some master cylinders are so restrictive you can't get this in and that's not a big deal but I like to try and get as much out of the master cylinder as I can before I start uh, and then put the fresh fluid in so it doesn't take as long to do the flush. And then I go to each wheel. I, I have no rhyme or reason. I just start at one and work my way around the vehicle and do all four of them. Go to the bleeders and what I'll do is I'll go till I see a color change in the fluid. And then when I'm all done with that, I will do a final bleed. And for some reason, sometimes I get just a little bit of air and trained, I don't know if it's around the bleeder or what, into the, into the uh, caliper. So what I'll do is have someone pump the brakes for me and just go around each one once and bleed it that way. And that'll, that'll purge out any residual air that may be in it. So, and then the other thing is, as you're doing this, make sure that you keep your master cylinder full. Because if you're out there on the wheel end doing it and you suck it dry, you're going to have to reprime your master cylinder. That's a, that can be a pain in the butt. So make sure you keep have somebody uh, focused on that, or uh, if you're doing it alone, make sure you keep that master cylinder, you know, fairly full so that you don't suck it down and, and draw air into it. So we're going to show the procedure for this, and uh, we'll get started with you. Okay, here's the master cylinder. We're going to pull that cap off, and then we've got a screen inside that we'll take out. And there's actually two little. Uh, holes there where the fluid goes in. We're going to see if we can fit through those holes. Looks like we can. And go down as far as we can. Then we're going to turn on the air. And we're going to start sucking it out. stop there and what I'm going to do is suck it down as far as I can and then we'll put in new fluid before we start bleeding uh, out at the wheels. So it gives you some idea of how that works and that, that vacuum really works nice for sucking that out. Okay I'm going to put my screen back in and here's the fluid we just sucked out of that uh, master cylinder. It don't look terrible. Um, the new fluid, I'll show you what it looks like. It's almost uh, like water. It's almost clear. You can kind of see the difference there. And the fluid in the master cylinder, it's going to change color as it takes on the oxidation and their oxygen and moisture. It's going to start turning to the yellow. It'll get to a dark, dark yellow and start turning to kind of a, maybe a blackish color as well. And uh, that's just telling you, the fluid's telling you it's time to be changed. And uh, uh, what we'll do is out on the wheel end, it'll probably be a little darker fluid because it's been exposed to more heat than what the master cylinder has. So it just kind of gives you some idea of the difference in the color of the fluid from the get-go. You can really see it here from when we started. It's, it's almost water clear in here. It's almost hard to see. Okay, I'm on the front driver's side wheel and there's an analog uh, brake sensor right here and that, well, the, the uh, wiring for it goes right through that holder or that cap for the uh, brake bleeder. So you got to kind of pry that top off. It's a little tight on there. Come on off. There it goes. Okay. And the wrench size for this front one is uh, an 11 millimeter. And I might just take that whole thing off so it's out of the way. We can put it back on after we're done. But uh, go ahead and break that bleeder loose. Come on, get on there. There it is. Okay, there it's broke loose, and then uh, we'll put our adapter on. Here we go, and then we'll turn it on. And we'll crack that bleeder open. You can see the fluid starting to come in.
I'm going to turn it down here a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to suck it till it's probably about uh, three-fourths full. And then uh, we'll keep the master cylinder full up there as well. But uh, once I've got about three-quarters of this uh, out, I've pretty much sucked out what's in the lines and also what's in the caliper. And uh, then I'll go to the next wheel do the same thing. And uh, when I see a nice color change, and I, I stop and, and uh, you know move to the next one. So we're going to go ahead and do this, and uh, we'll be back with you. I'll show you doing one of the back ones as well. Okay, this is the front wheel, the first one we started on. You can see the bottom here is more yellow. The top is more clear. So I'm going to stop at this point because we're getting some fresh fluid through it. Now another, another note is when you're using this tool, um, open the bleeder no more than probably a fourth to a third of a turn. Uh, you go much more than that and it starts sucking air in around the bleeder. So it works the best at, at probably about a fourth to, to a half a turn right in that, that range. And uh, that'll get you the best flow out of it. But it's something you got to play with a little bit. So we're going to go to the back wheel and see what that looks like. Okay, we're at the back driver's side wheel now. And it's the same wrench size and it's just got a cap on it to protect and get keep dirt out. So 11 millimeter wrench and we'll break her loose here and make sure everything's good to... There we go, okay. Yeah, we'll put on our little cap there, there we go. And we'll turn this on, get our vacuum going. Okay, so that's doing the back one here. We're going to do the same to the back as we did to the front. And uh, then we'll be back with you. Okay, we've got all four wheels that we've got uh, good um, light colored fluid coming out of now. And the pedal's a little bit squishy, so we're going to pump it up and uh, just bleed it the old fashioned way with somebody in the driver's seat pumping it up and, and uh, holding it, and then we'll release it again. So go ahead and pump it up. Hold it. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Go ahead and let it up. Okay, so that should get any uh, air out that, that's still in that caliper. So we're going to do that to all four wheels, and uh, then we'll be done. Okay, this is what we took out of the system, and that includes uh, probably some of the new stuff too, but uh, you can kind of see the color of it. And this is what we finished up with after we did the the uh, bleed the, the old way by pumping the pedal and, and uh, going around all four of them. And uh, the brakes are nice and hard and firm now, so, but that just gives you some idea. I've seen them a lot worse, like I said, I've seen them as, as dark as almost black. So, but that kind of gives you some idea as that fluid starts to darken, it's time to get it out. So, and we use a total of a little over four bottles of the uh, brake fluid to do this flush. So gives you some idea how much to have on hand. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amswell Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donswell.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.